<laughs> good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone who's listening from different parts of the world. My name is Richard Kerry. I've got Harriet Anderson and Bart Luz with me, and we're from the Leadership Insight Group, and we wanted to talk about actually leadership and authenticity. And we did do a post uh, on several social media platforms, and what we were raising here was the question of leadership and authenticity what influences the matters and is it really the whole package is it really necessary to have both and what we came up with was several five five areas of leadership and authenticity and we'll possibly go through these five areas with you in this uh, in this video so uh, without further ado um, I'd like to just introduce Harriet and Bart so they can just briefly share with other people who they are. I'm Richard, and uh, as I mentioned, part of the group here, and also a inner coach, and uh, help business leaders, sports people, to uh, get be empowered, being empowering for themselves and for other people. So that's briefly who I am. So Harriet, if you want to just jump in and briefly mention yourself. Yeah, sure. So my name is Harriet Andresen. Um, I'm a coach like Richard. Um, and I accompany people mostly who want to reorient their career, find other work, find a new direction, start a new activity. And uh, I really enjoy doing that and see how my clients find more confidence, find their voice, find their, their way. And uh, that's just the best gift uh, to any coach, I think, which you'll agree. Um, that's, that's, why we're, that's why we're in the game. Um, and um, I think Bart probably has the same motivation. And his activities may be slightly different. Yeah. I'm, uh, I work with primarily CEOs and um, <clears throat> people who are uh, managing directors, uh, people in, in charge or in the in leadership position um, for uh, mostly small to medium sized organizations and it's a uh, it's been an interesting time for for most of them and an, uh, and an interesting is <laughs> is probably the the not correct. <laughs> they, they, they wouldn't necessarily put it as interesting, rather as challenging in, uh, in, in many directions. Um, the good thing uh, to notice is that many of my my clients, their business is doing pretty well. Um, in in contrast with what you sometimes hear in in, in media, so maybe I'm a, I'm a bit privileged or a bit a bit uh, to to be working with with mostly CEOs who are whose business is doing fairly well. So that's mm -hmm. so we're talking authenticity. Yeah, uh, what was raised in the in the text was, uh, as you mentioned, uh, leadership. Uh, they have like a position on two different things. Uh, they're holding their title and running the business, and also, you know, they're they're the head of that organization. But it doesn't mean that they are the leader. It could be. And it couldn't be. I mean, they have people who also who are in positions for them who are more leadership than they are. But it was just interesting how we came up with this idea of talking about leadership and authenticity. And the, one of the f areas that I firstly wanted to highlight was the authenticity of leaders who have insight. And that, like you've just mentioned there, but they, you know, some of your clients, they already have the insight that the business is also going well and it's okay. And yet, you know, they can also have the insight of allowing other people to be more empowered, to take on the leadership role within the organization that it's not always on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just 
if we want to highlight what we what we all think about uh, to have insight as a leader and the authentic leadership. Anyone like to uh, share a little bit on that? Well, I was thinking a little bit about it and um, I thought, well, I'll just look it up in the, uh, what are you calling it, in the dictionaries. Um, and the words that came out of that for me, mostly the leadership is about the position. I said it's more about ability and skills. And so that sounds more like doing and authenticity. It's about being trustworthy and being genuine and those kinds of things. I mean, if it's for a painting or, you know, that they have to establish the authenticity of or a leader, um, but it has to do with really being yourself. And so that's about being. So it, the one thing is what you do and the other is who you are. And I think those are really two, two very different things because what you do uh, skills usually usually you can learn quite a few of those um, but who you are that's just who you are and there's not that much you can change about it who you really are um, I think that most of the personal development work that a lot of people do is to actually become more who they are because through life and especially in the professional world we learn to put on certain behavior or have certain masks or we need to be you know, look like this person or that person and to become authentic to be authentic is actually to take all of that stuff away again and just be there as you are um, and I do think that is in a professional context not always easy at the same time I think it is the best way to uh, to really get the trust from your people because they know you mean what you're what you're saying you walk you walk the talk and you're not just putting on some face to say, now, I want you to do this and this. Um, but if they don't believe that you actually stand behind it yourself, um, you're not going to get a lot of trust and follow up from them. So between doing and being. Okay, great. Bart, any ideas, any thoughts on this? Um, I'm just going to pick up where, where Harriet left off. And then I want to come back to what you said earlier about insight and maybe we can clarify or you can clarify what you mean with the insight in this mm -hmm. authenticity. Um, I think that Harriet makes a, a, a great distinction between doing and being, right? Um, the current times I think have been a, a, an amazing opportunity for everyone. Not only not only people who are running businesses, but, but staff and, and, and all three of us, and, and, and basically everyone. Uh, to to get back more in in, in, in connection with who who we we are mm. and what we truly want. In, the, in in this life experience and it's it's a great reflection point especially also for for, for leaders and CEOs to to see if what they're doing the business things they're doing that still is in line with who they are because um It's, it's like a simple barometer when things are going rough for you and you're like struggling and you're like feeling you're fighting the circumstances. Chances are great that you're not in line with who you are. And that doesn't mean that the circumstances are not in line with who you are. It's how you're thinking, how you're, you're relating yourself with who you are is not in line and um, it, it is that being part you, you know we're, we're mostly distracted by doing and and when, when um, things get rough we start going in like an overdrive of of thinking and doing and trying to get on top of things 
and that's mostly where we lose connection with who we are and it's, it's sort of a capacity um, skill even maybe maturing as a person that uh, allows you to be and stay connected with you are despite the circumstances regardless what the circumstances are and That doesn't ma uh, that doesn't mean that the circumstances in a business, and that means like uh, uh, re revenue and making sure that um, your people are taken care of, and all that isn't important. That's important. But if you're as a leader out of line with who you are. It's going to be very stressful. It's going to, you're more likely to make not so great decisions. And if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's see if we can circle back to insight. Uh, what, 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 what you meant with, with insight in this. Yeah, I mean, the authentic, authentic leadership with an insight is those who, like you say, who, who being who they are, but knowing that, you know, <laughs> that insight can come at any time. And, and there's been many uh, research shown that people get their insights actually from having a shower, from running, from uh, walking the dog, etc. I mean, there's been different uh, situations where actually people have not focused on something too hard and then the answers come to them and then they've actually gone with that insight because they know that that is what is right for them and their business and then so that's what i'm saying by the inside i mean the, the leaders can take that information with them and, and i like the the analogy of um Strategy equals data input plus the clarity. And I came from a, a colleague of ours, Jamie Small, where he, he highlighted that like Napoleon, where before he would go into his battles, he would gather all the data about all the generals, etc. he was fighting, and then walk away just before the big fight. <laughs> you know, he'd go and see his mistresses, whatever he was doing. And then when he came into the fight, into that war battle on the field. He was at peace with himself. He just knew instantly what he, insights were needed to be done to kind of outwit or to, uh, to, to strategically win that war mm -hmm. against, the, against the generals. And that was because he recognized that's the way he could get that clarity. Because if we don't have them insights, as you said, we, we kind of get everything contaminated. We get our head full of information, left, right, and center. And we're not able to calm down. We're not able to slow down. And that slowing down is part of the process, if we want to say it that way, of us understanding that once we start to slow down and just be who we are, the answers come automatically because they're already there. Mm. Instead of we keep searching for them outside and, and mm -hmm. asking, where is that coming from? How can we get this better guys, marketing team, uh, business team, uh, planning team, uh, production team? Where can, you know, they have all the answers. They just got to be listening to themselves and, 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 and knowing that, trusting that the information that they're coming out with is the best insight they've got in that strategic moment for their business. So that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally like that. Uh, the, it, it's, it's interesting, you, you start with the, the shower example or the jogging example or the, uh, something that we all have experienced with, um, with 
our best ideas come in those moments where we're more where, our, where we're more mentally relaxed or that we've taken off. Uh, it's 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 funny. We're sometimes trying to figure things out so badly that we're so focused on trying to fix that, but we we can't get to it. And then when the moment we we sort of like drop allow ourselves to drop the ball something you cannot do <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but in that shower it happens or uh, when we are jogging or when you're in your car uh, driving home uh, uh, that, that, that insight comes and the good thing with uh, being aligned with yourself is that well I said earlier is that you can the, the two the insight and knowing who you are what you want becomes like a sort of uh, uh, play because not all insights are going to be equal for you. And some are going to be very useful, others are not going to be useful. And the way you know is by, uh, by contrasting them to re- really, you, 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 really to what what you know for yourself to be true. And that starts with who you are. That's gonna be your, 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 your guiding star, your, your North Star. And to, to me, the two, the two go greatly hand in hand. Mm-hmm. The more you're at ease in yourself. not feeling overrun by circumstances, the more easy you will ha- have clarity. So if you're looking for insights to, or trying to figure out a solution, it's to me quite helpful to slow down and to, to take a step back. Mm. Yeah, but I think that's very often really challenging when you're in this situation that you have to come up with the answer, with the strategy, with the policy, the decision, and you have this whole weight of expectation and the need to have result and the need to succeed for yourself, but also for the organization. That's a whole ton of pressure that that people can. So how can you how can you do that? And just I think, I think that's an an, an, an awesome question and a very important one for, for those who are struggling. And if you're running in the world and you're finding your worth in the, in the things that get accomplished by your team or by your organization, then it's going to be difficult. Because if that's your North Star, how the business is going to do. Yeah. But that is what we are being taught mostly. Yeah, and that's what I said earlier. I think we, uh, the, the, the great opportunity now is to come back to ourselves, who we are, and knowing ourselves and getting in touch with our own inner being. And that using as a as as a, as a north star. If that means suddenly that you you feel you sh- you shouldn't be leading a, a company, that, that, that's great. If it means that you you you, you gain more clarity to lead the company, that's uh, that's awesome as well. The thing the, the thing is, if you're struggling and you're trying to find clarity with the so-called pressure. Um, it seems to me that you're identifying with something else than not yourself. Yeah, if, you're, that, I, if you're identified with who you are, the, the so-called weight is not yours. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you don't take things as important as a series of, but mm-hmm. the mental weight isn't there because the mental weight I think that nicely goes into the next area that we would that you've kind of kind of touched there, Bart and Harriet, with the demonstrate initiative. 
that demonstration of initiative is like you're saying about just actually showing that you, you're slowing down and actually asking your question, is this really my work anymore? Is this what I, I've done so much with this organization? You know, there's so many, there's so many great leaders who are actually great at starting the business and in the middle, they can't do it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and there's others who, you know, who have demonstrated that actually they're much more comfortable in the middle towards the end of an organ running a business. So there's always people who are coming in at different areas of running a business as a leader. Yeah. And, and that's the hard point part. If you, if you, Let's say you started up an organization and uh, it has grown from you three brilliant, vibrant guys working together and then suddenly there are 30, 40 people around you that you have to take care of. It takes like, a, you have to, things that you cannot be that, if you want to still lead that organization, you have to grow with you. But then, your own personal growth might go, or your own personal direction might go the other direction. Mm -hmm. So when you identify as a person with that leadership role, then you're gonna struggle. If that's not in sync with who you are, mm -hmm. it's important. So, so, and then you can run like another five years or 10 years, but at the end, you're going to crash and you're going to take a lot of people with you mm. in the meantime. Because yeah. chances are that, and we all do that, when we're stressed, we're not that um, open or uh, capable of leading, listening, relating to people. Uh, the, the quality of our relationships um, <clears throat> get tanked by, by, by our own incapability of being who we really are mm -hmm. so um, I forget where I was going help me out no I was mentioning about the fact that we were taught you know moving on to the, the next area which was on the um, demonstrate um, influence mm -hmm. so that the, you know it's difficult for them to influence if they are stressful and they feel as though it's not yeah. their place anymore. Yeah. And, and, and also that relates to exerting um, influence on people. So if you are stressed and you're not with, in the floor and you're not really wanting to be there anymore, you can't influence the team anymore mm -hmm. as you did before. Yeah. Because if you're not loving that position, and, and to be frank, most people who go in the leadership role at that high level, they've got to be really wanting to, wanting to be there to create something for themselves and for other people. Mm -hmm. And so their influence at that level is nothing to do with the position. It's to do about them, who they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got that power. Influence, influence to me is like a... If you if you really want to be influential, it should be a, like a, a complete expression of who you are, rather than the role that you're playing, because then you will uh, tend to go and we we all have done that to a command and control thing. If it's with your children or with with, with, with your employees, um, but if you're like in your <coughs> If you're basically home in yourself, then 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 the influential part go, go goes much easier. Mm. Yeah, there's no first of all, there's the, the, the space in your mind to 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 be clear of the be clear of the direction where you're going. And the space in your mind at the same time to be able to listen to those people you want to rally for your ideas for the company because influence in that organization as a leader goes all about being able to rally people behind your ideas for where, for where you think the, the organization has to go so 
uh, as in as in every organization, you will you you will meet some people who will be directly behind your your ideas. As, but there will be also a, a, a bigger group of people who, who who it takes a bit more time to convince. And having clarity in your mind and, capa and capacity to listen uh, to to, um, to to your team to your employees, it, it's going to be tremendously helpful. So, so are we saying then that, that by exerting influence within the team or within the organization, mm -hmm. you are making it impactful for other people? You can make it impactful for those who are around you. That experience of being an authentic leader in a, in a leadership role where you're being authentic, but you're being impactful at the same time. You, you know, people, people know, people feel when you're out of line with yourself and they don't like that. Mm -hmm. We never express that that way. No, no. <laughs> We, 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 uh, people will not say it in the words that I just said. Right? Yeah. They will say, oh, what a stupid <laughs> idea. There, there is again, and blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know that? But we, we, uh, people feel clarity as well in you as a leader. And thing is most people are not that clear in an organization. Mm -mm. A lo 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 lot of middle management employees have great ideas. They think the company should go that way. Yeah. And leadership mostly goes the other direction. Yeah. Right. So there's that, that frustration, but when, when you're clear, you, you can communicate it more clearly as well. And if you combine that with, listening to them because you, you don't need if you're not looking for yourself in that role but you know who you are you yourself do not need to get it somewhere else but just to be present in that in that context so and people feel that yeah and If your mind is trying to, the, people will pick that up as he's over his head, she's over his head, her head, um, and uh, that will frustrate them because they will say, "We need to do that." And so, so see, Does that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, an obstacle in all of this is. But when you're studying business, that is not really a subject that gets a lot of attention. Um, when I did my MBA, <laughs> nothing ever remotely connected to this came up. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know exactly what the content is of the programs these days for learning to manage in business. But um, I don't think there's a lot of attention to, to all that stuff. And that is really unfortunate because that means that people generally have to figure it out by themselves when they're already in this position where leadership is expected and results are expected and they feel they have to do X, Y, and Z to be good leaders. Um, and at the same time, they haven't really been given many ideas or tools about this. On the contrary, from the, the, the day you're in school and even before, you are very often just being made the same thing as your results. You know, when you're a, when the baby, they, they sort of want, oh, at what age did he walk or did she walk? When did he start talking? When were the first teeth, etc.? As if it's all like about performance. Um, and then you have to have the good grades in school. So if you have four out of 10, that's all, that's not a good result. But then you get very often the message that you are not a good person. And so there's very often identification of who you are with what you do. And then, of course, it's really difficult to step back from that and say, oh, but I am just me and I'm not necessarily what I'm doing here or my results. So I think that's quite a big step. And 
when it's about demonstrating initiative, that requires a lot of courage, actually, to step out of those ideas, because they can be really, really powerful in beliefs about who you are and how you should be. Mm. And uh, so that's not so easy to start, you know, working around and to sort of diminish in, in, in influence. Um, and most of the time you need to be in a pretty big crisis with your back against the wall before you start really looking at these these kinds of issues. And of course, it would be really nice if you could do that before. So mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't get to that state. But there's I don't really notice a lot of help being given to the, the managers and leaders who want to know who want to do this work and who want to be who they really are. Um, and it's unfortunate that it's mostly a, a, like a personal process and a personal initiative and a personal insight. Um, and so that often means also that it's lost to the company or the organization when they leave. So mm -hmm. in terms of, and that's to do with the management culture that's created in a company um, where particularly the highest ups um, have a, a big role by leading by example. But if they're stuck in this kind of stuff themselves, of course, it's not very easy for the middle managers and the team people to start working along these lines. Yeah, because then they're not able to really be impactful. And, and, and also their integrity, as you said, both of you said, their integrity is not really there for the other people, it's for themselves. So really, they're just for there for themselves. Hmm. Uh, but if, as, as both of you have mentioned that if the idea from the middle manager is that, you know, this is the way forward. And like Bart said, he or she is very clear with that and is able to communicate it across to the management board. And he has no expectations. He's just letting it go and letting them share with that idea. You know, there's been a very famous, I heard also, Bart Paul, I heard of this one as well about Kodak the board of Kodak, who uh, one of their researchers guys actually came up with the first idea of the, um, the digital. yeah, the what camera, the digital camera. And it was like a toaster and it could just take one picture on, on a digital platform, on a digital plaque, etc. And Kodak says, we're not in the toy business. We're in the film business. And then you got them five years later uh, going for a, Redundancy, totally everything's gone, liquidation, they're gone because they hadn't had the foresight to, to they, they wanted to stick with the old approach, mm -hmm. stick with their old ideas. And, and this is what you've highlighted there, Harry. They have been all taught to take advice and that's it. And not to use their initiatives because initiatives don't get them in business. They don't get anything in business. But now we're seeing that most businesses that have been created have been created for initiatives and ideas and they're wanting to make a change and be impactful. Look at now, we have so many companies starting up along the web, online. We have so many small entrepreneurial companies creating so many different ways of making business from putting courses online uh, to webinars to whatever, because people are just going what they feel is is, is right, it's what is for them right, with no expectation. Mm. And, and, and society and business now is having to adapt and change to that. <laughs> yes, I mean. So as you said earlier, Harriet, um, it only happens when people are with their back against the wall, that they are starting to look at other well, that's when they start to realize that the things they've been doing is not getting them what they wanted to get. So, mm -hmm. so they have to, to to look in different directions. And then, as you said, often they leave the company uh, on a personal search. Is the is the it's growing up? It's the maturing that I spoke earlier of, of the the individual, but it's 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 facilitated with the um, it's facilitated by the by society where we live in, we grow up. <sighs> this, this is interesting. I, I, I'm not into religion, but there's this. Uh, uh, Christian. Oh, Franciscan 
monk um, who has written a, a book about uh, the, the two halves of life and, and the first half of life is mostly about winning, getting things done, how society is created, is it business and all that. And the, the, the second half, and, the, and, the, and the, the, you, can be in, you can be 17 and already in, in the second half of your life, or you can be 97 and still in, in the first half of your life. It doesn't matter, the age is, isn't important. Uh, but uh, the state of consciousness and, uh, and knowing, they say, knowing thyself. Um, is that this is in that second half of life? It's where you where you don't have to get somewhere to be okay. And much of leadership is we have to get there, and then yeah. But it keeps going, keeps going, and, and 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 due to that, at one point people they get they get into a midlife crisis because they they they, they feel it's not there must be something more to life than this. Mm -hmm. And with handling the framework or helping people to, to realize that they can become, they don't have to run the company or the organization or the, they can find themselves and still be productive and be in line with who they are as a person leading other people. So we had like, how many points did we touch of the five, Richard? Oh, your soundtrack. Sorry, my soundtrack just went yeah. off. I've got the cats playing here. Um, we've touched about four of them. The last one would have been the integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think you've just touched base with that right now. I mean, the integrity is being who you are, being aligned with who you are. And, 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 and like you say, you know, it's not about going to the next level in the leadership role. It's about the next level of you kind of creating who you can be, the creating them possibilities of who you can be. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, that would be the integrity of being the authentic leader. That integrity of, of leading yourself and others into a, a better understanding of how they can be and who they could be without having to do it all the time, mm. but just being there and having fun and creating the business and see where it takes them. Um, you know, there's plenty of examples where, you know, companies uh, have changed around. Look at Apple, how it changed from where they started um, and Jobs was left and then the board took over and then Jobs came back again and how he changed it all around again because he saw something new. And with his integrity, he wanted to make Apple as best as he could. And he did it, he turned it around. And look how they are now. And look how all the other experiential organizations have, have made a difference. Uber, for an example, Airbnb, how they have actually changed the way we, we go on holiday, where we can stay. We don't have to stay in hotels anymore. <laughs> That for me is what they're trying to do. They're trying to create some form of integrity for everyone to enjoy and, and, and live by in a way that's simple and authentic. Yeah, the thing is it makes life so much easier. Yeah. And there's so much more capacity to lead others and to take your business forward. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, and, and this is what we need the, the, the most in this time, I think. We can all be distracted by all the, the government roles and the changing government roles and all, all that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it might not be that easy.
but, but you stay you stay your course yeah yeah but then you also see how for example i, I think of facebook and it started with an idea and with uh, was different etc and but now it's become so big and we see that there are quite a few excesses linked to the way how it's functioning and the leadership that's being given in particular by mark zuckerberg with regard to hate speech and politicians lying and all that kind of stuff and i think that's a, for me it's an example that he's not showing good leadership with his company and that he's not showing integrity to to a number of values and um so for me he is actually not being a good leader um and i doubt that there's a lot of authenticity there just the impression I get is just a lot of money, money, more money. But the, the original idea of, there, there was a lot of sort of serving, community serving people with connecting, etc., which I think was a very good idea. Um, but then in practice, I think it has become a different kind of machine um, that is, well, in my eyes, in any case, lacking leadership and lacking authenticity in the leadership. So, there you go, Mr. Facebook. <laughs> that's, just, that's just my opinion, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It seems, it may be, but maybe he was the best guy to start it up and not necessarily the best guy to run it now that it's more in a stage, it's more maturity. Oops, it's my table. Uh, there seems to be, I think it's at a stage of more maturity. But hmm, if we see those five eyes for authentic leadership, Insight, initiative, influence, impact, integrity. Hmm. So I think it's also interesting to use them as a bit of yardsticks to, to measure how you look at uh, organizations and how they run things. And I'm sure there are a lot of middle managers in Facebook who would love to have good ideas about how to do things differently, but not necessarily being heard. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, that was just my, my little rant on Facebook. But, That's fine. But I do, I do think in terms of integrity, etc. I mean, there are issues there. And so for me, that takes away from the value of the company and even the value of the experience of using, using the service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But would you like to add anything before we close? Deep thought. No, the, 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 it, it's interesting. The, the, idea, the ideas or the insights jumped out. Uh, maybe, maybe it's good we, we, we sort of make a, a, a little chart that people can. Yeah. Um, how do you say it? Um, see where they are on the, on the map from okay. zero to five on insight. How's that going for you? How's, that yeah. going for, how's your influence going? How's your integrity going? Yeah. So you have like a, a, a checkbox for yourself. For where you are and where you would like to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that that'll be, be I'll put that in the post after the conversation and we'll put the yeah. video online yeah. and then we'll give everyone a little check checkbox just to see where they are one to five on the different areas. Yes. To see as being an authentic leader where they are on it. And it's no right or wrong. It's just for them to kind of see where they are and, and see mm. where you know, the questions, I mean, they're all welcome to contact us all individually mm -hmm. and, and to have further information about what we do within companies. Um, but uh, that will just give them a little bit of an insight just to see uh, for themselves where they are. I think you could also use it really well as a kind of 360 thing to ask other people, how would, how would you score me on these five criteria? Mm -hmm. Because that can be interesting as well, because you may think you're the most the person with the most integrity in the world. And if you're, all your team people say, hmm, not so much, then that's probably also something that can give you something to think about. Because if you're using this little schedule with a seal scheme box, I think it's a really good idea. It means that you're already starting to think about your functioning. Mm -hmm. And so feedback from other people can be a useful input there as well to, uh, to help in, in the process. Great. Thank you both for that. Um, thank you everyone for listening. And hopefully this has been really 
uh, interesting for you as it has been for me on the five areas that we wanted to highlight to you about authentic leadership. And uh, for those who wish to uh, come back to us, you can drop a comment on each of our profiles or you can drop a comment on, on mine. Uh, you can contact us all directly. We'll, I'll give you the links of Harriet and Bart as well. Uh, feel free to, to contact us all because we're all in this area. And uh, yeah, we always like to be of service, of help to those who are interested in creating something for themselves and for the other people in being authentic leadership. So it's a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from Harrod and Bart. And uh, we we'll hope to see you again soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye now. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.